everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals and I've got a fun package here to unbox with you today plus a journal with me session working in my Daphne's Diary journal and my Intentional Life yearly journal where I will be featuring some of these beautiful stickers that I will be sharing with you today that came from the lovely Treasure Keeping. So these are the sisters Mia and Bella I believe and here is their thank you card. I will link their channel down below in the description box along with their Etsy shop. And if you follow my channel for a while, you might have, or might remember me talking about treasure keeping in the past. I did a giveaway featuring one of their journals when I bought one for me and also bought one for the giveaway so that we could have twin journals. It was so fun. And I mentioned back then, it was maybe a few years ago now that I did that giveaway just how much I love Treasure Keeping's journals and still to this day I can say that they make some of my favorite journals. I just love the style especially the the beautiful hard covers that they make and yeah it's just so beautiful so go check them out and send them lots of love and support and I'm just going to open this package here and share with you their stickers. So there's lots and lots of beautiful beautiful florals and that's right up my alley because that's one of my favorite themes of journals to make so I was absolutely very excited to receive these aren't they beautiful and especially since I've been you know working in my Daphne's diary this year I, I've kind of um, taken to stickers a lot more this year. I, I didn't used to use stickers much. I love them and I collected them and always wanted to use them, but I never seemed to use them much. Um, but this year I've used them a lot. <laughs> it, they're a great way to decorate my Daphne's Diary Journal because it's a smaller layout. Um, the stickers are just an easy way to fill in the spaces and cover things that I want to cover. So these stickers were perfect for that. Um, and you'll see later on, I do a page spread using these stickers to cover the things that I want to cover and just to decorate the page. And yeah, lots and lots of different sticker sheets. So go check out the Etsy if you're interested in owning some of these beautiful stickers. Um, and to share them around, I use some of the sheets for my own personal journaling, but because there were so many, I want to share the sticker joy with you guys. So I did put some sheets into the mystery packs as well so this is sort of like a contribution to the um, mental health fundraiser so you'll get a surprise if you were one of the people who received one of these really cool sticker sheets um, so while I'm doing this unboxing and then going on to doing my journaling um, treasure keeping actually gave me some questions so at the end of last year I asked some of my favorite journalers and creators for some questions that I could answer on my channel because questions are one of my favorite things in the world, always have been. I call it one of my love languages. If you wanna make me feel loved, ask me a question or answer one of my questions. Uh, so Treasure Keeping gave me a whole bunch of questions and I'm going to answer them in this video and hope that it is um, entertaining <laughs> and encouraging and yeah. The first question is, what experience made you a better person? So right off the top of my head, the first thing that came to me was the depression and anxiety I had back in 2015 and 16, because it, I think it made me a better person because before I went through that, I, I can definitely imagine I was very rude and insensitive to people with who struggled with mental health. I basically had the attitude of just get over it because I didn't know any better. Um, and so going through it myself gave me empathy and understanding for those who struggle with mental health. And, and it helped me to know that it's not just something, you know, you get over. <laughs> and it also helped me to embrace my own feelings instead of suppress them. It helped me to embrace pain it taught me that pain is part of life and I don't have to run from it and it doesn't make me a bad person or a failure. I learned that depression can actually be a friend because it's trying to tell me when something is harming me in my life. Basically, it tells me when I'm believing a lie and when I have an unhealthy worldview. Um, 
And I've learned that the most painful times can teach me the most, grow me the most, and make me a better person. So yes, going through depression and anxiety was the worst thing, I've, you know, like the hardest time of my life type of thing. Um, but it's the time that grew me the most. It's the time that taught me so much. And so I'm grateful for it. Um, the next question is, what is a positive experience that changed life for the better? And the first thing that I thought of was a charity walk that I did from Sydney to Melbourne back in 2011, raising money and awareness for the Dalit children in India. And it was definitely the craziest thing I've ever done. I never thought I'd do anything like that, especially since I don't like walking. <laughs> but I did it to challenge myself. Um, and it took us six weeks and we walked an average of 30k a day. And along the way, we spoke at churches and homes and a school, sharing about why we were doing what we were doing. And it was like a crash course in life, people, teamwork, mission, faith, um, God, facing fears, public speaking, everything. <laughs> it showed me that more was possible in my life and that I could step into challenges and do new things. Because before then, I lived a very you know sheltered life and just never did anything new. Um, so from there, from this walk that I did, um, I started doing things that I never thought I would do. For example, I started the next year after the walk into 2012. I started ballet as an adult. I studied a short course in creative writing, which led to me then changing sort of my study direction. I was, I did study zoology and then after the walk, I followed my heart and studied writing and literature. Um, I moved from Melbourne to Queensland, which I never thought I would do. I never thought I would leave my home in Melbourne. Um, and later, you know, I did things like I auditioned for a musical, which I never thought I would do. <laughs> um, and so much more. But I do have to say that another experience that played a part in all of this is 12 years of Beach Mission, which, yeah, was absolutely life changing. But it wasn't like a one event type of thing. It took 12 years to change me. <laughs> The first year, I just was remember being so terrified because I had no idea what I was doing and everything was just scary and out of my comfort zone. But yeah, slowly uh, over 12 years, it um, changed me. It really, really did change me. And I went from someone who was you know, terrified of acting on stage and speaking up and sharing stories to directing and acting in my own skits in a production and to, you know, sharing my stories on YouTube in a public way, which I would never have done before, like never, never, never. So yeah, Beach Mission and the charity walk are two things that definitely changed my life. The next question is, what makes you happy? So I just wrote a list of things here. Keanu, my black cat, of course, he makes me very, very happy. Um, yummy food, yummy food definitely makes me happy. <laughs> um, crystals shining rainbows on walls ah oh, I could just stare at those rainbow rainbows all day with a smile on my face <laughs> um, finding a book that is a page turner oh that's one of the best feelings ever getting lost in a book so good um, and having my thinking expanded it's one of my favorite feelings ever as well is when I can be given a new insight you know a light bulb moment or a, an aha moment to have my thinking changed like oh so good. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> the next question is, what are you grateful for? Again, I just wrote a list off the top of my head. I'm grateful for sunset skies and colours. Whenever I see a beautiful sunset, um, I, again, I can't take my eyes off it. And I'm just thankful that I am alive to witness it, to witness such a thing, to witness such beauty in nature. Um, silver moons shining. There's just something about moons. Um, anytime I see it in the night sky, it sort of delights me and takes me by surprise and gives me a sense of awe and wonder, again, where I just want to keep staring at the moon and, I don't know, there's something about it. <laughs> um, very grateful for health, physical health and being able to breathe through the nose, things that we just completely take for granted. Oh, health. Very, 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 very grateful for health because it's something I have absolutely no control over. Um, well, okay, we do have some sort of control to an extent, but in a lot of ways, we don't control that. Um, and I'm very grateful for shelter, 
you know, just for having a warm bed and a roof over my head and um, very grateful for the country I live in and very grateful for kindness. The next question is, what is your favourite book? And I always say it's Blue Like Jazz by Donald Miller. It was the first book that felt like it was sharing my own thoughts and I didn't know anyone else thought the way I did and so it let me know I wasn't alone and that I was allowed to think the way that I did, in particular about God, faith, church and Christianity. You know, that's okay to have questions and doubts and to struggle with faith and to think and do things differently, that that's all part of it and we can talk about it and yeah. Another book at the moment that's a current favourite, because Blue Light Jazz is an all-time favourite, but a current favourite is Phosphorescence by Julia Baird, I think it is. And it's a book about what sustains us in dark times, and I love that. That's a theme that I really like, actually. Um, And kind of makes me want to write my own book or create my own journal about things that sustain me in dark times, because it'll be different things for different people. Some things will be the same, but... Some things are universal, but some things are very specific to specific people. But this book reminds me to look up and out whenever I get trapped in my own thinking and my own problems, because my problems aren't really problems compared to some some of the suffering that happens in the world. So it just helps me to look to other people's suffering instead of being trapped in my own petty problems. Uh, the next question is, what motivates you? And I found this to be a very general question, so I wasn't sure if this was referring, you know, to creativity or journaling or like to getting up out of bed in the morning or in life in general. So I kind of answered it in more of a general sense. Um, and this is just what came to my head at the time. And what motivates me is just to this, this, you know, desire to be a good person and to not waste the time and gifts that I've been given, to not waste my life, basically. Um... And for my whole life, I've always been concerned about this. You know, ever since I was a kid, it takes up all my thinking, basically, to the point that it it can make me anxious because I care so much about being a good person and not wasting life that I, I try and I work so hard to be good and do good. And when I inevitably fail or hurt someone, it can like just destroy me and make me think things like I shouldn't be in the world and then I should just you know give up and you know all that kind of stuff and um, I think it stems from my main schema which I shared in a mental health video before my main schema is the belief that there's something wrong with me that I'm a bad person the defective schema and so that's something I have to continually journey with it's one of my probably you know lifelong struggles even though I know God says he loves me no matter no matter how I am, no matter how I think or feel about myself, which is my absolute rock. (laughs) Without God, I would be, you know, completely a wreck, a mess, lost, because he, he reminds me that I am worthy, he calls me worthy, and he sees me and knows me, and he still says I love you, and has created me for good to do good, and I love that, I love that. Um, So the next question is, what is your favorite food? And at the moment, it's salmon. <laughs> I just really, really like salmon. Oh my goodness, it's so yum. <laughs> Any chance I can get, I am eating salmon. <laughs> it was a bit of a luxury, um, so I don't get to eat it often. Um, but maybe that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. Because if I had it literally every day, I'd probably get over it very quickly. <laughs> Next question is, if you could live anywhere, or where would it be? This is always... a pretty boring answer for me because I'm such a homebody that I would just say where I am <laughs> at home um, but you know what comes to mind is obviously Melbourne because that's where my family is and that's where my where I grew up and it's you know my home always but I also love it here because of the, the weather the sun the beaches the beautiful views um, but if I would go with a more you know exciting answer I'll go with Portland, Oregon, because I've always had this sort of dream to go there because some of my favourite writers come from there or have lived there and I just have this vision of writing books in cafes and going to bookshops and reading books and talking with intellectuals and having my 
beliefs challenged and that just sounds so fun um I have no idea if it would be like that if I ever went <laughs> but in my dreamland that is what I picture um and then the last question is sort of two questions in one what are two lessons you have learnt from life so the first lesson is one that I learnt really early on as a kid and it is that well, I believe everyone is doing the best they can with what they have and what they know. So always give people grace, give them the benefit of the doubt. And for me, you know, I trust that people are good with good intentions, even to the contrary, <laughs> when evidence says the contrary, I would tend to go the other way because, uh, well, you know, our bias and we tend to think that people see things and think the way we do which is incorrect of course <laughs> but that's just how we are so because I am a person who is constantly concerned with trying to be a good person and trying to do good and be good I then naturally just assume that other people are the same way that other people care about being a good person too and so I trust that people have good intentions and that people are doing the best they can again I know there's evidence to the contrary and I can't be completely you know naive and all that kind of thing but that's my default state is I I am yeah want to believe in the best in people I do believe people are good I and I believe the best in them and so even if people you know are cruel or unkind um, I still say and stand by, you know, treat people well, no matter how you're treated, um, no matter how people treat you, treat them well. Um, don't call them names. If they're dragging you down and calling you names, don't call them names in return and don't try to drag them down in return. And I know it's hard and obviously we have our reactions and we have our defenses and, um, you know, I'm, I don't always do it myself, but I try and aspire to always treat people well, um, no matter how I'm treated. So, you know, sometimes occasionally on my channel, for example, I might get attacked um, occasionally by strangers. Um, and it's lovely. It feels um, really sweet when people, you know, come to my defense publicly on my channel. But I very much um not a fan when there's name calling and and you know I appreciate people coming to my defense and I appreciate people wanting to do that for me but um when it crosses the line over into name calling or tearing someone else down even though they may have teared me down um that that hurts me I don't like that seeing that at all I I no <laughs> so um yeah, even I, I like having that perspective of even though, yes, people can hurt me and it feels really, really bad, I still don't want, I, I still want to uplift their worth and their dignity and that they are made in the image of God and that they are created for good too and that they have a good impact in the world and that they are making people around them happy and they can do that and just, you know, public forums online, it, things get taken out of context and we can just assume that that person has bad character if they said that one negative thing and it's like no I believe that they have good character and it was just this one thing that, that maybe they said that was you know mean but I still believe to choose to believe that they have good character and that they are a good person who is bringing much good to the people around them to their friends who love them um, and I just got the short end of the stick <laughs> you know <laughs> off, on the off chance on my channel one day which doesn't happen often I have to say um, you know, I've been on YouTube for four or five years now and it has happened very infrequently. So yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I, yeah, when it does happen, oh my goodness, it does tear me to shreds. <laughs> but yeah, that's not a reason to tear someone else to shreds either. You want to uplift them and uphold them. Anyway, and then the second lesson that I've learned from life is basically just that I don't know much. I have no idea what it's like to be other people. And especially I have no idea what it's like to be people, to be like people who are different to me, who maybe grew up in a different country, a different culture, have a different worldview. And so it helps me to get out of my limited mind and to try to understand what it's like for other people 
to try to understand what they know because what they know is different to what I know and it doesn't mean that they're right or I'm wrong or I'm wrong and they're right. It just means that we're seeing things differently and both things are valid and it, and it's all okay. We can learn from each other and grow from each other and um, help make each other better through through that. Instead of judging each other or comparing ourselves to each other or, you know, assuming that other people are wrong I try to take the standpoint that I just assume I'm wrong if there's a disagreement um, it's maybe there's something that I'm missing maybe there's a piece of information that I'm not aware of or maybe I'm just very egotistical and just can't see past my own bias you know um, so I've just got to be more aware of um, just because I see something some way isn't the be all and end all and Really, I don't know much at all. <laughs> you know, I have got, I do have beliefs and I do have opinions. And there is a lot that I will stand on and stand by, you know, my belief that people are good. Not everyone agrees with me with that. And I will argue with you, <laughs> you know, with my perspective. But I will also know that I could be wrong. And I will take your argument and your evidence and I will say, yes, I see your point. And still my view can stand with caveats. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not like just going to really nearly believe anything and everything, of course. Um, but I am try to and want to be open, aspire to just always be open to knowing that I could be wrong and that I could have to change what I think. Um, and again, not that it's really nearly, I'll go wherever, whatever opinion is here or there. Um, I st- still am strong in, you know, my, for example, my belief that people are good, um, but I will have nuances to it and I will have an understanding that not everyone thinks that way and that I could be wrong. And maybe that's context-based and all those things, like that is just one example. But to know that, yeah, the way I see things and the way I think, and it could all be wrong. It could all be wrong and it probably is. <laughs> And not necessarily all wrong, but that I have limited knowledge and therefore some of it is at least wrong. I absolutely believe that. I believe that there are many things I am completely wrong about. Absolutely believe that 100%. <laughs> anyway, so which is why it's always good to be open and to expose yourself to other points of view and other people's lived experiences and you know especially when it comes to suffering in the world you know um yeah just no judgment and try not to be afraid of difference try not to get defensive when you feel attacked try just to listen try just to be open and try to appreciate everyone with what they bring and see it as a good thing that can enhance and make better and yeah <laughs> anyway I'm kind of rambling here but let me just go back to these beautiful stickers um so I especially really love these sort of cartoon style stickers the one that look more like illustrations I don't know I love them so much these are so pretty so I just kind of went nuts with them and decorated my um Daphne's diary journal with them and now I just wanted to keep going so this is my yearly journal and my intentional life journal for the year and anything major from this year is I, I document it in this journal as well so little things everyday things go into my Daphne's diary journal but the big major things go in here and so these stickers are delightful I'm just putting in the thank you card here and leaving some writing space as well and I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Treasure Keeping, for sending me these beautiful stickers. Go check out their channel and their Etsy and have fun picking up some of your own stickers for your own journaling. And thank you so much for watching and listening. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.